Acura may be late to the fully electric party, but the company is making a big splash with the reintroduction of the ZDX nameplate. Now, we already had a chance to show you guys the ZDX Type S, but here on the floor of the Los Angeles International Auto Show, this right here is the ZDX A-Spec. Let's take a first look. So by now you guys are probably aware that the Acura ZDX shares a platform with GM's excellent Altium platform, which is a battery electric platform that also underpins vehicles like the Blazer EV or the Cadillac Lyric. This car is kind of like the Acura version of the Cadillac Lyric, but as you can see, it looks nothing like its GM corporate cousins. I think Acura's design team did a fantastic job with making this vehicle again look like an Acura. Now the Type S model is the high performance version that offers 500 horsepower. This model here is the A-Spec. It's going to be the more uh, longer range model and it'll also be a little bit more affordable. But let's go ahead and talk about the exterior styling. You can see you have the corporate face of Acura here with the diamond pentagon grille. The grille, of course, is kind of sealed off uh, because it's an EV, it doesn't need the actual cooling. But I also love this kind of LED light signature that goes along the actual grille. You have the chicane style, full LED headlights uh, with the LED daytime running lights. There's no fog lights down here, but you can see the front fascia on the A-Spec is a little bit less aggressive, which again, it still has a really charming look to it. I think Acura did a fantastic job. I wouldn't be surprised to see this design language eventually make its way to like a refresh version of the MDX. Now I can't pop the hood of this model here uh, because there's also no frunk I was told by Acura but uh, this vehicle here, the A-Spec is available with a single motor rear wheel drive or a dual motor all wheel drive. The range is gonna be either 300, 325 miles or 315 miles with all wheel drive. Acura says that this model here will have around 340 horsepower. So again, decent numbers. The Type S has around 500 horsepower. So this one has a little bit less, but it should be enough power for most people anyways. I think people are really gonna be going after that range which is up to 325. Now moving around the side profile, you can see this model here is kind of like the flagship SUV, although it's not quite as big as the MDX uh, at an overall length of 197.7 inches long with a 121 inch long wheelbase it has a very long wheelbase longer even than the Honda Odyssey minivan and that's again showing showcasing the fact that you have a big 102 kilowatt hour battery pack that lines the floor because remember this is a full EV and that's why the wheels are kind of pushed out uh, to the corner so looking at the wheels you can see these are the uh, kind of like an accessory black uh, finished Berlin a black finished 20 inch wheel uh, wrapped in a 265 by 50 R20 tire so that's different versus the 21 inch wheels that you get on the Type S. You also have four wheel disc brakes. These are a 12.6 inch rotor at the front. Surprisingly, the rear rotor is actually larger by, thir by an inch at 13 and a half inches, which is surprising to me. Um, Acura, again, has a fully independent suspension on this car. I don't believe they offer an air suspension on this model like they do on the MDX, because remember, this doesn't share a platform with the MDX. It shares a platform with the Cadillac uh, Lyric. You can see there's an A-Spec badge here as opposed to the Type S badge. The charge port door is over on the other side. I'm not able to kind of open it because this is still a very early uh, prototype model. Uh, but this vehicle should be able to accept around 190 kilowatts. Acura says you can basically add 80 miles of charge in about 10 minutes. Now looking at the uh, roof panel or the roof, you can see there's a nicely integrated a low profile roof rack. There's also a panoramic sunroof. I suspect Acura will probably offer uh, roof rails as an accessory. The chrome along the belt line also has kind of been blacked out here, but there is chrome up here. You can see the rear design here. I'm glad to see Acura didn't give it kind of like that poop-like profile like they did on the previous generation ZDX. And then looking at the back here, slight difference versus the Type S. You still have, again, the ZDX, ba ZDX badge here with the new uh, fully electric badge. There's also an all-wheel drive to show that this model here does have dual motor all-wheel drive. We don't know the horsepower though. Uh, 340 is for the single motor rear drive. Uh, the all-wheel drive model could have more, it could be the same. There is an A-Spec badge back here, of course, to show that this is, uh, again, the sporty looking model, not necessarily the high-performance version. And then the rear diffuser is slightly less aggressive. You have integrated parking sensors and whatnot. And the taillights, you can see, they have the similar design to the front with that chicane style. It's a full LED taillight. But let me know in the comment section below if you guys prefer the looks of the A-Spec over the Type S. I personally, again, like the sportier model. Now, looking at the cargo area, we don't have final cargo figures just yet, but you can see the space back here, because it's a two row SUV, there's plenty of space. I believe if you guys look at the cargo figures of a Lyric, it should be pretty similar. You can see the seats do fold down in a 60-40 manner. There's LED lighting. You can also fold the seats down from a button back here, which is nice. And if you look underneath here, there is some underfloor storage, which is great. Although I don't believe Acura includes uh, an actual spare tire. So let's go ahead and move on to the interior of this ZDX A-Spec. Now compared to the Type S that we showed you guys a few months ago, the A-Spec that 
uh, we're, show we're sitting in here obviously has a black interior with the contrasting red stitching. It has a mixture of like a leather with a suede Alcantara. These seats are also heated and ventilated. They just, I believe in like 15 or 16 different ways with full power. You have two person memory here on the driver's side. And overall this cabin obviously has a look that reminds you of an Acura, but if you start poking around, you're gonna see a lot of General Motors influence, which is a good or bad thing. I said that in my first CDX video. And I have to say, I think that Acura has done a really great job here with giving us an interior that feels modern, that feels sophisticated, that feels high quality. You obviously heard earlier, there's that GM bong, which I have a feeling that will end up staying. But again, most people probably won't notice it. Only finicky journalists like myself are gonna notice that. But uh, looking at the door panel here, you can see it has a soft touch injection molded plastic, which is nice. You have some ambient lighting here, which I believe you can probably change the color to. You have some chrome trim. Uh, you have this kind of alloy trim here on the door panel, which is nice. You have an aluminum accent to door handle. It's padded over here. Window controls are lifted straight straight out of a General Motors part bin, but you have auto up down for all four. You have power folding mirrors as well. The steering wheel you can see also is uh, a variation of a steering wheel we've seen on a GM product. It does include, as you can see, a power tilt telescope function, which is nice. Uh, there's also one paddle on the wheel here to engage maximum regen. That's something that GM does that you're seeing here on an Acura as well. You can see there's uh, a heated steering wheel, your controls to control that uh, fully digital 12 inch display as well. And then this car, because it shares the GM parts bin, it is available, of course, with Super Cruise. Uh, Acura is, of course, calling it something else, but it gives you that full ability to give you hands-off driving on interstates, on certain interstates, and that's an Acura first. Acura has never had that feature. Uh, and then over here, looking at the center stack or in the, or in the dashboard, you can see it's got some nice leather here with the contrasting stitching. This right here is like a silver painted plastic. I was hoping they'd put a little bit nicer aluminum trim here. Up in this area here, it is hard touch plastic, but over the instrument panel hood here, it is leather stitch, which is nice. Uh, and then over here, the center display. Now, if you guys remember, when I first had a chance to show you guys the ZDX Type S, it had like a little sticker overlay to where the screen actually looked. Uh, today, Acura at the LA Auto Show is basically demonstrating the 18-speaker Bang & Olufsen stereo system. So it's a first for Acura to do Bang & Olufsen. They've always done ELS. Uh, so they are allowing you to kind of mess around with the sound. Um, I can turn the volume up here where there's a song playing. It's a copyright-free song. And you can see... I mean, it, it's hard to hear obviously on camera, but it, it sounds very crystal clear. If you're an audiophile, you're obviously gonna like that. You can also kind of play around with how you want the screen or how you want the sound profile to kind of go as you kind of cycle around here where you can go from different sides to the vehicle. I also love how responsive the screen is. I'm actually really impressed with how this looks, the graphics looks. Acura did a good job at kind of putting their own software in here, which is nice. You can also go and center it back. So this screen here is bright. It's really easy to kind of see and utilize. And I'm excited to actually play around with this system because I can tell that Acura has done something to the software to make it different. Now looking over here, you can see dual zone climate control with these actual physical knobs, which is nice. Um, you have a wireless phone charging pad down over here. This is kind of like additional storage. There are two USBs. This right here has some gray painted plastic, which I'm happy that Acura didn't put like uh, piano black plastic here because that's gonna show fingerprints and whatnot but you can see the wireless phone charging pad. It looks directly lifted out of a GM vehicle. There's some nice leather stitching over here. And then if you open this up here, the center console is actually pretty deep. And then here's the key fob for the vehicle. So as you can see, it's got an Acura logo at the back, but if you flip it over, this is clearly a General Motors key. So <laughs> that might remind you again that you are driving a GM product, but again, there's always certain things that Acura has to kind of cut corners around. And I think with the exterior styling, the software updates, the look of this vehicle, it also is going to you know, make it feel like an upscale vehicle. But let's go ahead and hop into the backseat area of this car because I want to show you guys the space. Now, I don't have final legroom figures just yet. I'm hoping I'll be able to drive this car sometime early next year, but as I get in and shut the door, because of that extremely long wheelbase, there's a ton of legroom. I'd probably say we have approaching mere, uh, maybe 40 inches of legroom back here. Uh, because it's a dedicated EV platform, it's got a completely flat floor, which is nice. You have rear seat air vents. There's a big hole here, which I would suspect could be a space for like a tri-zone climate control system. You have two USB-C charging ports here. You have two storage cubbies in each of the front seat backs. And then the seats themselves, they obviously give you the ability to fold down, which kind of almost gives you a completely flat load floor, which is nice. The seats also give you a recline function where you can recline it slightly, or you can kind of have it more in an upright position. And then the vehicle is so wide, you can see the center seat here could actually fit an adult. Let me go ahead and move over here. You can see, actually, it's not bad. It's actually kind of sat down a little bit lower versus the uh, outboard seats, so it's not bad over there. And then if you want to 
Fold this down, you can see there's an armrest with two cup holders. In terms of the headroom space, for somebody my height, my head comes pretty close. That panoramic glass roof obviously lets in a lot of light, but it does take into your headroom space. Uh, but overall, materials back here, you can see our soft touch injection molded plastic. You have more of that uh, LED lighting accent with the aluminum door handles, which is nice. Padded center console area. But overall, you can see if you guys are looking for a mid-size luxury SUV with a big back seat, the ZDX is certainly going to deliver on that. Now, before we wrap up this video, I wanted to show you a different spec'd out version of the ZDX Type S. You can see compared to the blue one that we first showed, this white exterior color with the black two-tone roof and the black mirrors is a really excellent color combination. The 22-inch wheels, which had a machine finish before, these are an accessory wheel, which are blacked out again. It's kind of got like a Berlin of black. Uh, it's riding on a 275 by 40 R 22-inch summer performance tire. That's going to be a dealer accessory. You can see uh, it's got a larger, two-inch large, I'm sorry, it's a three-inch larger front brake rotor at 15.6 inches with a a Brembo yellow painted caliper. And overall, as you can see, the ZDX Type S definitely looks better, but the A-Spec is gonna be more of the volume seller. That's gonna be the one that starts at around $60,000. That's the estimated starting price. This model here will likely be above $70,000. And obviously we don't have final pricing just yet because Acura, again, is going to announce that as we get closer to the on-sale date. But if you guys are looking to pick up the ZDX A-Spec or the ZDX Type S, you're gonna have to wait a few more months. It'll be sometime in the early part of 2024. And I'll be looking forward to actually getting my hands on one to drive. Uh, sometime soon. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed this overview on the 2024 Acura ZDX and the A-Spec and this Type S. Uh, for Redline Reviews here at the 2023 Los Angeles International Auto Show, I'm Sofian Bay.